This is my childhood home in Shueyville, Iowa. With a population of about 700 people, I'm not surprised that none of you know where that is. But regardless, I'd like you to think about where you lived when you were 16. You're about halfway done with high school, probably learning to drive by yourself for the first time. And unless you're the captain of the football team, you're probably not at the peak of your existence. <laughs> I myself was not having a good time and could be described with one word, scared. I was scared of failing for getting anything less than an A, or being made fun of for being different than my classmates, or not get, having the perfect amount of volunteer opportunities and being rejected by my dream school. I was cautious, I was careful, I was filled with fear. But at the same age, I was asked to face it. I became one of the first students at a new project-based high school called Iowa Big. At this school, students are asked to pick a project that is meaningful to both them and their community. Now, being a part of something like this was far out of my comfort zone, and it kind of scared me. But after my first day at this new school, I learned something really important, that I could be someone who faced and overcame fear. So for the next years of high school, that's just what I got to do. I faced fears of upsetting people at my old school, of not successfully finishing a project, and failing in front of an audience of people. I had both successes and a lot of failure at this school, but I was becoming a more pure version of myself, or more towards the person I wanted to become. And this home is where that dance with fear and transformation all began. So the fear I have in this current moment is that I will forget the rest of this presentation. <laughs> And I will stand up here and not share with you my mission to convince you that today you can face fear, but it won't come from where you anticipate. And that fear will invite vulnerability, authenticity, and self-discovery into your life. So let's start with the greatest fear I have ever faced, the great unknown. So here we are in Spokane, Washington. I left this nice little neighborhood in eastern Iowa where you are considered mean if you don't greet your neighbors for this foreign land where there are real mountains and weed is legal. <laughs> I waited way too long to make my college decision and was left with two choices. The first was 15 minutes from home and the next was 1,500 miles. I saw this prospect of this school so far away from anything I had ever known and knew that it would change me. It would force authenticity, vulnerability, and self-discovery into my life, so I had to do it. But the night before I left, I was freaking out. I was laying in my bed crying, and my wise mom came up and knelt next to me. Knowing that I wouldn't take her up on her offer, she promised all I had to do was try it. And if I hated it, I could fly home with her and dad that week, no questions asked. She was right, though and I will be crying again four years later to leave this place that has become so special to me. And like I said, vulnerability, authenticity, and self-discovery were forced into every day here in Spokane. Those three things have become integral in my journey with fear, and I hope you see that they've encouraged me to continue to face fear head on. So, after a tumultuous freshman year with a few bumps and bruises, I signed up to face one of my longtime fears, discomfort. This fear is rooted in not knowing where I would sleep at night or the two girls that I would be living with or the woman that would open her home to us. So now, we're in Cuernavaca, Morelos, Mexico, where I would be studying Spanish for six weeks. After a nervous plane ride and a really bumpy bus ride, a few of my classmates and I walked into a humid Mexican classroom. At the back of the room were about six women around the age of 50 who immediately fell silent when we entered the room like they were further pointing out how much we didn't belong there. Those women would become our host mothers and would be driving us home after our first day of orientation. The car ride in my car was awkward, to say the least, as the language barrier was really intense. We pulled into our driveway, drug our suitcases full of six weeks of clothes up to our new rooms. I had a twin bed oddly close to the floor and a small closet that I shared with my roommate. But by far my favorite part of our new room was this tile balcony. I didn't know it at the time, but I would spend every morning watching the sun light up the Mexican sky so slowly before school. Just then, our new mom called us down for our first meal together. We sat at this really big um, wood table 
and I looked across the table at the two girls who I would come to share every adventure with. They were just as scared as I was. But that fear was really special because all of us shared it, and it invited vulnerability, authenticity, and self-discovery into our little family. Six weeks later, our mom, as we were really emotional about leaving, said, it's not adios, it's only see you later. Somehow she had the faith to know that this would be a really amazing experience for all of us, probably because of the fear that we faced and overcame together. 24 hours after a painful goodbye to Mexico, I found myself in Dublin, Ireland. Literally 24 hours later, I was by myself in the middle of Trinity College, Dublin, with a huge suitcase, once again filled with six weeks of clothes. This time, I was terrified of being lost. Fortunately, the Guinness factory was not far away, so I did make it there. <laughs> but I was so terrified of being adrift in this new country, unfamiliar with the community that I didn't have, that I was familiar with in Mexico. So thanks to this fear, I let authenticity guide me. A few days into our stay, my class was on an excursion, and I was shoved into the uncomfortable seat right next to the bus driver. It had the best airflow on the bus, but it was too close that I couldn't not talk to him. The poor Irishman, it took him a while to warm up to his new co-pilot, <laughs> but eventually he told me of betting on the US election that would happen in four months. I thought it was a joke, so he literally pulled out his betting ticket and showed me he bet on Donald Trump. <laughs> and then he told me of the small town that he was from and that I could get a cheap ticket from the middle of Dublin and go there by myself. So that night, I went home and bought my first ticket for my solo trip. I found myself in the middle of this town called Uchterard that was a few blocks by a few blocks wide and had a cafe bar and a church. The cafe bar was the same thing as I was enjoying my morning scone. There were men a few yards away from me enjoying their Guinness. <laughs> I spent the entire day doing exactly what I wanted, getting lost, losing self-service, and finding the largest lake in Ireland which was shockingly hard to find. <laughs> I went home that night with the biggest smile on my face. I let authenticity guide me because of what I was so scared of, and it led to this beautiful adventure. So the travel bug is real. I believe that the bug is this little voice inside of your head that promises life, happiness, sadness, success. It says there's an adventure to be had somewhere other than where you are right now. And it promises vulnerability, authenticity, and self-discovery, but a safe distance from reality. So I struggled with, throughout the next school year with this little travel bug in my head, so I signed up for my next adventure. Come with me now to Valencia, Spain, where I would have to be okay with being very, very alone. I arrived in Valencia and was greeted by a man named Luis, who I had spoken to on the phone twice. It sounds really unsafe, but he was way nicer than I expected, and I was excited to get home to meet his wife, Maria, and their son, Guille, who I would be the nanny for all summer. Up to this point, I thought that we had a short trip to the middle of Valencia where we would find our home when I realized we were driving away from Valencia. Every horror kidnap travel movie went running through my head <laughs> as I quickly asked Luis where we were going. He said, we lived 30 minutes outside of Valencia in a small village. So a few days into my stay, I had run out of places to keep me busy. I could literally walk across the village in less than 20 minutes. People started calling me the American staying with Luis and Maria. And lonely I was. One day, it all really surfaced. I was standing on the balcony of our apartment, looking down at the one busy street in the small village, and I just felt so alone. I called my mom, again, the wise lady she is. She listened to me ask her how I could spend so long, so far out of my comfort zone. I told her all the things I was scared of. And as soon as I hung up the phone, a weight had physically lifted off of my chest. It was as if just admitting my fears and being vulnerable enough to do that had transformed this loneliness into solitude. So for the next few days, I spent my free times in the morning mimicking the old men who would walk so gingerly on the sidewalk. I would sit on benches across from them and just watch the world go by. And I would bring nothing to a coffee shop to just sit and enjoy my coffee. I became someone who wasn't afraid of the self-discovery that can only happen when you are truly alone. So I had faced all these fears and gathered these fears from around the world, and I wanted so badly to protect them. 
The thought of going back to that 16-year-old girl that was just scared terrified me most of all. But a few months ago, I had a choice. I could go on my last summer's adventure and be vulnerable and authentic and face fears around the world, or I could come home to this place in Shueville, Iowa. Jetting around the world to face your fears is exhilarating. We tell ourselves that going far away is brave and adventurous, but that's easy. Coming home tests to see if it was all real. I am the first person to say that travel is crucial for learning and perspective, but it is not the end. At some point, you have to come home. Now, it may not be the home that you had when you were 16 years old, but you have to come home to yourself. So that's what I'm asking you to do today. To know that you don't have to hop on a plane to find vulnerability, authenticity, and yourself. You can find them facing a fear right here at home. So I have found the antidote to the travel bug. I still jump at any opportunity for adventure, but I no longer buy the promise that out there is the way to real life. I had to go around the world and face these fears of discomfort, the unknown, getting lost, and being lonely. But in order for those fears to change me, to become a part of me, I had to come home to the little girl who lived here in Shueville, Iowa. Thank you. <laughs>